Good afternoon. This is hearing number 11 of the 183rd regular sessions of the uh, commission entitled the human rights situation in the context of cyber surveillance in El Salvador. It was requested by, by a series of organizations from the civil society. I am Julissa Mantilla Falcon, uh, the president of the commission rapporteur for El Salvador. I am joined by second vice president Margaret May McCauley, commissioners, sorry, and commissioners Clark and Bernal. We also have the special rapporteur for freedom of expression and the executive secretary. I would like to greet the honorable representation of the state and the civil society organizations and most especially uh, Mr. Scott Scott Campbell representing the office of um, the Commissioner for Human Rights of the UN. We will begin with 20 minutes for the civil society, then the state will have 20 minutes as well. The invited organizations will have seven minutes. Additionally, the OHCHR representative will have seven minutes. After that, the commission will speak for 15 minutes and we will go back to the civil society and the state for eight minutes. I would just like to say that we have a digital tool to measure time. We have English, Spanish interpreting and subtitling. Um, these public hearings are being streamed and the recording of the here of the hearings will be available on the YouTube channel of the commission. We can begin now and we'll give the floor to the civil society for 20 minutes. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen of the Inter-American Commission for Human Rights. Thank you for giving us the floor and the possibility to hold this hearing. We would like to greet Access Live um, Amnesty International and the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights of the UN. They are all joining us at this hearing. We also thank the delegation of the state of El Salvador and everyone joining us via broadcast. My name is Sonia Rubia Padillo of Comisión para el Debido Proceso. And together with several organizations from El Salvador for justice and uh, journalism, we will present on our uh, denounces about freedom of expression and its limits in El Salvador, in particular the attacks against journalists through intervention and um, uh, surveillance carried out with uh, surveillance software Pegasus. As the commission know, ever since President Nayibe Bukele signed as president, we have seen many attacks against freedom of expression. Throughout all that time, we have seen a terrible deterioration in the freedom of expression in our country. We have seen an unprecedented campaign of um, um, threats and illegal administrative um, actions against those who call for uh, transparency in the government. This shows that the government does not um, have any tolerance for dissidents and does not protect human rights and shows no uh, commitment to meeting its international obligations. These uh, threats and attacks against journalists became aggravated with the confirmation of the spy software Pegasus. They use it as a tool that exposes uh, journalists because of a series of violations to their intimacy and integrity. Uh, we will uh, now uh, explain about a serious situation that took place. And now I will give the floor to the representative from the uh, Journalists Association from Salvador. Thank you, Sonia. I would like to greet you all. I will give you a context of the situation of uh, freedom of expression in El Salvador, where there is a crusade against journalism. It first started with blockages for um, press conferences and officials who wouldn't speak to journalists. Now there is a whole discourse of hatred a use of the tools of the state against freedom of expression and attacks on journalists ever since Bukele arrived to his office has stigmatized the media outlets and journalists who have published stories about 
uh, criminal pacts or ethical uh, problems. This hate speech has uh, penetrated all kinds of institutions and citizens who insult journalists every day. What's most dangerous is that now there have been physical attacks against our uh, professionals. This was documented. The aggressions, according to the monitoring center, have increased in the past three years. In 2019, 37 attacks on the press were uh, registered. Now in 2021, 219. And most of these attacks were committed by state institutions. They were particularly terrible when it was the ter um, when the target were women since there was sexual violence against them. There were physical and virtual attacks. Also blockages on the access to public information and the use of the instruments of the state to restrain journalistic work. The Institute of Access to Public Information has been voided. Um, President uh, Bukele has protected almost 300 proceedings from uh, the um, review of the press. Monitoring Center reported five cases of censorship on journalistic uh, stories at the request of the public prosecutor. Ministries like the Ministry for Economy uh, carried out audits on mass media targeting opposers or uh, the people who oppose the government. And now uh, legislators have said that they intend to pass laws to limit the work of the press. The Legislative Assembly with the reform of Article 259D created uh, digital undercover agents that without an explicit legal authorization, what they are doing is legalizing uh, spy work in El Salvador. There are statements of high officials against freedom of the press. In June, the Ministry for Justice recognized that the government was following and surveilling journalists. In September, the main legal advisor of the president, Mr. Argueta, threatened presidents, sorry, threatened journalists because they refused to give up their sources. He urged uh, the general public to actually sue uh, journalists. And as this commission knows, as well as other organizations, El Salvador has a um, trend towards closing civic spaces, which is a risk for journalists, but also it's a risk to the work of civil society organization and human rights defendants as the law on the approval of foreign agents. Last year, there was the passing of a law against criminal crimes, which uh, set uh, punitive, which sets punishments of jail for those who uh, release certain uh, virtual information. Countries like Chile, Colombia, Ecuador, Honduras, Panama, and Mexico have acquired licenses to use Galileo or Da Vinci, which are the commercial names of uh, an Italian company called Hacking Team. And in a clear um, attack, I'm sorry, on a clear um, use of these uh, tools, Citizen Lab identified over 100 attacks on journalists and human rights defendants. And this was as a result uh, as the, of the leaks about Pegasus. Pegasus is a distinguished spy software released by an Israeli company. And it allows to extract emails, messages, to record um, conversations, 
And that company confirmed on February that it only sells a technology to states to fight terrorism and organized crime. Now, in this context, our citizens are unprotected. There are no efficient resources to counterbalance the consolidation of the use of this kind of software in our region in El Salvador. We have been able to prove that the devices of those who were spied on with this technology are not terrorists or criminals. They are journalists. A journalist of Gato Encerrado, Anel Faro, suspected that her phone, their phones had been tacked and asked Citizen Lab to um, perform a technical analysis on their devices. This will be um, elaborated on later. Now, the journalists who have iOS phones uh, tested their phones as well, and we knew that they had been tapped, but still we had, we wondered if our Android using um, colleagues were being spied on as well. We were notified that uh, when my device started being hacked, that took place in September 2020, and that um, allowed the perpetrators to get confidential information about our magazine. Learning and confirming that we were spied on by Pegasus was an attack on our privacy, especially because we know that this harassment is related to our journalistic work. Now we know that those, uh, the perpetrators have a full database with our personal and professional information. They know the places we go to, the, the people we talk to, or even who we get together with. They have accessed our family lives. This made us feel vulnerable as journalists, but also as citizens. But another thing that concerns us is that behind this um, spionage, there's persecution against our sources. Even though we try to protect them, we fear that this harassment seeks to intimidate them so they will stop shedding light on the status of things. And this might be added to the threat that, as we mentioned, the legal advisor of El Salvador made to make um, journalists reveal or give up their sources. After the um, spy acts against women journalists, there's a fear that that information might be used for blackmail and intimidation. And I'm talking specifically about women because in these contexts, they are the ones who are most exposed to misogynistic attacks. And that is makes it riskier for their security and integrity. Thank you, Ezequiel. Good afternoon, everyone. As we said, uh, during the first round of analysis of the um, phones of journalists, uh, the organization's Amnesty Citizen Now and Citizens Now established that at least 35 phones with Salvadorian numbers had been infected with the Pegasus virus. Out of these, 22 were employees of El Faro. But what's amazing is not the number of the people who were spied on, but the amount of interventions. In the case of one journalist, up to 49 times in a year and a half, and how much time they spent connected to our phones. In the case of another journalist, they stayed on his phone for 269 days. In my personal case, uh, in the operators uh, spied on me for over 160 days. These operators accessed our emails, our chats, our pictures, our videos, our bank accounts, and were able to activate our microphones and cameras almost permanently. So they lived with us without our even knowing. The technical analysis allowed us to establish that the operator is in El Salvador. And I would like to thank the wonderful contribution to our security done by Citizen Lab, Access Now, and Amnesty International. Um, they help us and journalists around the world. And I would like to thank them for being here at this hearing to um, provide information as technical experts. We checked the technical information that was given to us 
by these organizations and we compared it to our publication cycles and we found that the periods with the higher amount of interventions occurred at the same time as we published the most the stories that affected the most the uh, current administration the reveal that we did of the team of venezuelans advising the president and his entourage and what we published about the adoption of Bitcoin and corruption cases in the current administration. These interventions took place between June 2020 and November 2021. It is important to remember that the Inter-American Commission for Human Rights issued or granted precautionary measures in favor of 34 employees of El Faro on February 4, 2021. So the interventions with Pegasus um, were done during 10 months while the uh, precautionary measures were active, where the um, and where the commission had asked the government to protect the work of the journalists and their freedom of expression without being intimidated, threatened, or harassed. The interventions with Pegasus, the uh, software that was designed to fight terrorism and organized crime, are a serious invasion to our privacy, our professional and individual privacy. So it's unacceptable. They are also an attack on freedom of the press, especially in a context where the government of President Bukele, which controls all three branches of power, has closed all the mechanisms we had to access public information. The intervention with Pegasus is seriously dangerous for our work, and it has brought about the distancing of our sources out of fear for the uh, retaliation of the government. Of course, this is very dangerous for us as well because operators can follow our location live through the geolocalization device they can activate. And this isn't the only means of espionage as they have that they have used as the commission knows because we have also reported in previous hearings the presence of drones in front of our houses, the fact that we were followed with vehicles or that they would follow us to work or home. We are very much concerned that those who ordered the tapping of our phones, we're afraid they will use it, use our private information to hurt us or our sources. We know that the Israeli software is only sold to governments with the approval of the Ministry for Defense of Israel and we know that the operator is in El Salvador. So we are talking about a government operator who is working in El Salvador. After this was revealed in the media of the world, the administration told Reuters that they are not responsible for the uh, espionage, that they fear that um, members of the administration are being spied on as well. If that's true, that's a threat to national security. Still, there no one in the government has been in contact with us. There have been no letters of complaint against the state of Israel. There have been no research or no investigation open to uh, understand the origin of the tappings. Now, the um, as we said, the Congress uh, passed a law establishing the figure of an un undercover agent online. And this also publishes the leaking of documents that are considered confidential. Now I will give the floor to uh, the representative of Sehil. Thank you, Carlos. Good afternoon. Central America is the highest example of the closing of civil spaces and the constant deterioration of freedom of the press in Latin America. No government in the region, including El Salvador's, seems to be willing to fight this. These practices that are anti-democratic are unacceptable and show their rejection to checks and balances. 
for everything we have exposed, media, the media, the organizations that are here request this organization that, that this organization urges the state to stop harassing and attacking the press through its anti-media uh, discourse. Second, we want the state to stop using the Pegasus software or any other tools that attempt against our right to privacy, because the illegal use of this software can affect the uh, rights linked to journalism, including the rights of our sources. Third, we request the uh, unbiased investigation of the um, spying events that were reported at the general prosecutor's office to understand what happened and how the software was used in our country, and also the sanction of those responsible. Fourth, we ask for non-repetition warranties through the annulment of uh, laws about cyber vigilance and the modifications on the criminal code and the special law against cyber crime respecting the obligations that stem from international law. Fifth, we request effective warranties for the right uh, to privacy and the freedom of the press and also the work of journalists and human rights defenders. Finally, the organizations and media that are outlets that are here urge the state not to retaliate against journalists and human rights defenders or their families or means of information. This because of the high risk entailed by the participation in this hearing. And apart from the threat that we are exposing here, uh, we request timely actions from the Commission and the Special Rapporteurship from, for Freedom of Expression to follow up on uh, this. We would like to thank you and please uh, add the content of this hearing to the final press release about this. Thank you. I will give the, the, the floor to the state. Dear Commissioner, greetings from the state of El Salvador, and we would also like to greet the petitioners of this hearing. We would also like to greet Mr. Scott Campbell from the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights, with which we have established a relation of collaboration through its office. I am joined in representation of the state of El Salvador, Tatiana, advisor of the presidency of the Republic, Nestor Guzman, director of legal advisor, Jaime Rivera, the chief of the unit of crimes on life and physical integrity of uh, the office of El Salvador who have been appointed for this hearing by the President of the Republic. Gerardo Aristides Marquez Res, a specialist expert from the Ministry of Justice and uh, the, uh, the Office of the Prosecution Commissioner, Chief of the uh, Civil Police, Gloria Martinez, from the cases of international uh, cases of the uh, Foreign Office, and me. Tania Rossi from the Foreign Office. I would like to give the floor to the Prosecution Office. Thank you. Good afternoon, Commissioners and Inter-American Commission of Human Rights and representatives of the civil or society organizations. I would also like to greet the officials representing the state this afternoon. I would like to thank you for the opportunity of listening to us. Dear commissioners, the petitioners of this here have presented before this commission a framework that suggests a situation of democratic deterioration and weakening of the state of El Salvador and the persecution of the journalists. 
put it in risk the freedom of expression. They have also mentioned attacks of intimacy against journalists and critics of the administration. The state would like to bring about the, the, the on the 31st of January, the commission issued a press release with its reporter for freedom of expression and with the office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights, who, which expressed its concern for the use of the software Pegasus to spy on journalists and organizations of the civil society of El Salvador, that between comas. They did not mention that public officials in El Salvador were also received an alert of an intervention of their phones. The commission called upon the state to investigate the facts and to protect the victims and to offer warranties to the right to freedom of expression and the right to privacy and of the work of the, of the human rights defender through the, uh, the investigation performed in an unbiased way. We also were recommended to establish a non-repetition warranty and to uh, modify the laws on cyber surveillance. I would like to underscore that the press release of the commission, it is indicated that the Rapporteurship for Freedom of Expression had already warned on the use of our software in other countries of the Americas and the risk it implies on the victims. However, we should review journalistic sources of the website Abnets International that show that this situation has been identified as a global problem that affected activists, journalists, but also chiefs of states and public officials. This does not uh, intend to diminish importance to what has been said in this hearing, but to uh, provide context for this problem, which needs uh, the control of this technology, which if they are well used, they are used for a, a, an adequate purpose to fight against organized crime and several regions that affect the region, but also have to do with uh, acts against terrorism, all with a legal framework that considers global standards of human rights and that warranties the principles um, of subsidiarity. We have elements that are very important for this hearing. This is a very important issue and the investigation of this fact is also key that requires a great need and level of independence in the investigation, but also the greatest cooperation, both public and private, which the, we were affected by these facts and by others, such as the journalistic exercise uh, in El Salvador, who also collaborate for these actions. Dear commissioners, we observe that the intervention of the petitioners in this hearings, hearing intends to simulate a, a persecution of the state and surveilling different people in the country with the use of the software Pegasus. 35 people were supposedly spied, 20 of, 22 of them were part of the Faro. The state declares that under no circumstances it is persecution, harassing, or stigmatizing people that criticize the government, even though they attribute to themselves the uh, role of journalistics journalists. As it was communicated to the commission, the origin of such interventions is unknown. That is why the Office of the Prosecution is carrying out the proper uh, investigations in order to determine the um, authors of those crimes. 
the situation has also violated the um, the privacy of public officials. So it is important to say that today in El Salvador, there are digital journals who, who are independent. Most of them criticize the government, but there is a concentration in these media with these interventions, according to what was posted in, with, by the petitioners of this hearing. So we cannot make a generalization that this has to do with the editorial line of the media outlet. We should notice a diversity of the media outlets affected. There is also a situation that is being surveilled by the commission within the precautionary measures granted to several media outlets of a digital journalist journal and these answers to the investigations for persecution and threats against journalists of the El Faro journal and whose representatives are present in this hearing. As to the investigations, they are oriented towards the individualization of the victims. And in the facts denounced, there is no stigmatization as to uh, threatening acts, well-defined threatened acts. And we make reference that in a certain context, they are not addressed to a person in particular. However, I am not go deep further, that further, since there was a presented a petition by the state. So I believe this petition should be revised by the commission through the mechanisms and specifics for the follow-up of this measure. There is currently an exhaustive uh, investigation on the use of the Pegasus program. And we cannot determine yet the origin of the activities that were um, addressed. However, if the existence of such activities is confirmed, they are going to be prosecuted and uh, according to the internal standards on international law as well. There is an investigation of against uh, cyber sur surveillance due to a notice received this year by the president of this association in relation to the um, detection of those devices with the software device, the Pegasus. There were several uh, units of cyber crime and the uh, civil police and they requested to interview the people that were denounced with the purposes of obtaining more information on how they got to understand the facts and with the uh, people affected as victim in the case at hand, I would like to express that even though there were declarations by the victims, uh, by the by the petitioners at that time. We did not have the uh, testimonies of the people who have been intervened in their cell phones. That represents a high hindrance for the investigation and the efficiency of our uh, investigations. Once these 31 victims are identified, we are going to interview them in order to clarify the facts and to obtain information on the circumstances of the execution, gathering the evidence that allows us to prove this. The information will be treated according to law in order to identify the people responsible in the case at hand which is currently under investigation. In relation to the facts post in the hearing, there is a violation uh, and on, in, on prejudice on the journalist. In this case, the president 
denounced on January 13, 2022, that they got to know that the private account used by public officers, which is owned by the APES, which is for legal and institutional advice, was also intervened for unknown people who sent a message to the contact network that was stored in the account of that region for this investigation and a public officer was appointed in order to interview and to obtain greater detail on the crimes in coordination with the pertinent activities for the treatment of the information acquired in order to identify the people on the case at hand, which is under investigation. I repeat, we have not had any collaboration whatsoever by the petitioners. We have already requested the information from them and we have not had an answer yet. Now I would like to expose some of the cases of organizations or entities that have been victims of the crimes in of uh, cyber crimes in until February this year. Public officers of the public sector, we have 33 the denounces and out of 44 registries, but we can say that the commission of those crimes through this technology in that territory is against journalists and the prosecutor officers is carrying out all the actions according to its mandate in order to prove the facts that were denounced and to prosecute the authors of those crimes. I would also like to mention, dear commissioners, that we have a state of government institutions that have been victims of such crimes. Among them, municipalities, the Institute of Prevention of Social Security, or PAMS, the Office of Accounts, the Custom Office, the civil and national police due to the crimes of access to crime systems, damage to inf uh, IT systems, espionage, etc. I would like now to refer to a topic which I believe that has been manipulated in the media and in the social in the social networks the assembly the legislative assembly had approved our section 259 which is related to the hidden agent and other techniques of IT surveillance, the colleagues present in this hearing that are part of the civil society, that are lawyers, won't allow me to lie that in section 282 of the current codes of procedures exists the possibility that the police can use special techniques of investigations with hidden agents and um, participation of in participation of crimes. This provision exists for many years and this same figure is the one that is transferred to this topic, which is a use that has to be awarded is a hidden agent when there is a crime against children, women and for obvious reasons, I'm not going to dive deeper because it has to do with investigation strategies and techniques. And if you see that the text of the law, it's exactly the same as the current text of the law. And that one, the other one is in force for a long time. So it's not for the espionage of social media and persons in general. I would conclude reasserting that El Salvador respects the freedom of expression and freedom of press, so no intervention is made in the exercise of uh, the journalist role. 
Independently of the editorial line, I would like to thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you. You have three minutes left. You would you can use them in the next round if you wish to. I would like to give the floor to the organizations. You can introduce yourself before starting. Thank you. I would just like to thank you. I am Belisa Guerrero. I'm together with my colleagues. Jonoka Okerol from Amnesty International, uh, International and Angela from Access Now. We would like to thank the invitation for, be, for being part of this hearing. We are going to say what Pegaso is and what they have found about this in El Salvador. I will give the floor now to the, my colleague from Citizen Now. Citizen Lab has many years experience tracking and forensically analyzing devices that have been infected with Pegasus spyware. Our findings have triggered multiple official investigations, as well as multiple updates to all Apple devices. We've also been featured in expert testimony. The basic capabilities of Pegasus spyware have already been covered in this hearing, and I'm not going to revisit them here. Our forensic examination involved checking artifacts from infected devices and led us to conclude with high confidence that 35 journalists and members of civil society were hacked with Pegasus spyware between July 2020 and November 2021. Some, inf some victims were being infected dozens of times. Amnesty International's security lab has independently confirmed our findings. Three additional facts suggest a possible responsible party. First, Internet scanning and fingerprinting identified a Pegasus customer exclusively active or near exclusively in El Salvador, beginning at least in November 2019. We call it Torogos. In our experience, an exclusive focus on a particular country suggests that that country's government is a likely operator. We have also connected Torogos to an infection attempt against El Faro, one of the targeted organizations. And third, the targeting took place while the victims were working on topics of specific interest to the government of El Salvador. Taken together, these findings establish with high confidence that these individuals were hacked with Pegasus, and they also raise the next key question. Is Torogos the government of El Salvador? And is it responsible for these infections? After hearing the intervention of the government of El Salvador, I would like to add two additional observations. First, the government has noted that governmental officials also received notifications, presumably from Apple, that their devices were targeted with a spyware. I respectfully submit that it is not uncommon for governmental users to use the spyware to monitor their own officials. Second, I would like to note that the government has stated it was conducting, in its words, an exhaustive examination. I would like to note that I am unaware of any contact made by the government to our investigative team. I would describe this as inconsistent with our experience with past official investigations. Thank you, and I give the floor to Angela Aracon of Access Now. Muchas gracias por la palabra. Quiero referirme a seis particularidades del caso del much, I would like to mention six particular details we should be paying attention to. First, the use of Pegasus to violate human rights was already made public when several devices were infected in Salvador. In 2021, Pe Pegasus was denounced at the world level, at the UN and at the Inter-American uh, commission. So it's very unlikely that the attackers in Salvador were unaware of the illegal use of the spyware. Second, El Salvador has uh, one of the m confirmed cases with the highest number of infections on a journalist's device. What is the possible reason when the device is turned off? Uh, Pegasus does not stay on the device. So uh, there was an intention to watch this person uninterruptedly. Third, at least one victim had been uh, attacked by the Mexican operator of Pegasus, a journalist who in 2016 was the target of Pegasus when he worked for a Mexican NGO. This is just an example of how impunity in previous cases leads to uh, more serious uh, human rights violations. Fourth, El Salvador is the second country with the highest number of infected persons, 35. Fifth, 
the wide majority of the devices were infected without the need of them clicking on any device, which makes made it more even harder for the victims to suspect that they were under surveillance. And sixth, according to the available information on the prices of Pegasus, it must have cost at least $2 million in El Salvador. Finally, I would like to emphasize the consequences for the victims. For example, the fact that at least one person close to the group of victims had to leave the country out of fear, or the fact that the sources of information are now afraid to talk to them because their conversations might be surveilled, make it evident that the violation to privacy goes beyond other violations as well. Now uh, we will present um, our requests to the commission. Request the commission to continue monitoring the situation of Pegasus in El Salvador and develop comprehensive and robust inter-American regulatory standards governing the use of targeted surveillance technologies in accordance with international human rights standards. This framework should include at the very minimum urging states in the region to enact domestic legislation that imposes limits on digital surveillance, including ensuring that it is surveillance is governed by precise and publicly accessible laws that it is authorized subject only to an individualized warrant from a competent, independent and impartial judicial body with limitations placed on the time, manner, place and scope of surveillance and that authorized digital surveillance is subject to detailed record keeping ensure that all digital surveillance is subject to public oversight mechanisms, including an approvals process, public notice and consultation for new surveillance purchases and regular public reporting, and ensure that adequate mechanisms for domestic legal redress in cases of unlawful targeted surveillance are available. Also require disclosing information about all previous, current and future contracts with private surveillance companies by responding to requests for information or by making proactive disclosures. We also call on the Commission to urge the state of El Salvador to impose an immediate moratorium on the use of spyware technology until a robust human rights regulatory framework is in place. While we've noted uh, that there are calls for investigations, we'd like to reiterate that any such investigation should be independent, transparent, impartial, and timely. Authorities, where appropriate, should pursue legal avenues and provide remedies. Thank you. Eh, muchas gracias eh, a las organizaciones invitadas eh, que hacen su presencia eh, en esta audiencia y además a, la, a las peticiones que se nos hacen. Le doy la palabra entonces ahora, siete minutos, al señor Scott Campbell, representante de Barnum. Thank you, Madam President, commissioners and colleagues. I would like to thank the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights for the opportunity to participate in this public hearing of the 183rd session of the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights on the human rights situation in the context of cyber, cyber surveillance in El Salvador. Kindly excuse me as I, I read an obligatory disclaimer paragraph. My participation is in my capacity as Senior Human Rights Officer of the Office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights, where I lead our work on digital technology and human rights. I'm here to provide the Inter-American Commission with information orally and informally and without being under oath about the human rights situation in El Salvador. Nothing in my comments should be understood as a waiver, express or implied, of the privileges and immunities of the United Nations under the, the 1946 Convention on the Privileges and Immunities of the United Nations. Thank you. The impact of surveillance on the human rights situation around the globe is a crucial concern for the UN Human Rights Office particularly considering its direct implications on the right to privacy and the protection of civic space. In this context, we continue, continue to follow with great attention the debates promoted by this commission and the rich experiences across the region. And as we have noted in past hearings, when the right to privacy is undermined, the core space vital for the development of opinions, for the promotion and protection of all public freedoms is also profoundly compromised. For this reason, and being mindful of the extreme scope for intrusion created by digital technologies, the UN High Commissioner has repeatedly called for more attention to the profound implications of surveillance and has called for urgent measures to stop the marketing of surveillance tools worldwide until minimal safeguards are established. Reports on abuse over the last, last few years from all regions leave no room for doubt. Malware tools marketed allegedly for responding to complex security threats are being manipulated to threaten civic space, often through intimidation, turning phones of human rights defenders, journalists, and others 
into real-time spying devices. These concerns were first raised in the Americas. In 2017, the Special Rapporteurs on Freedom of Expression from both the United Nations and the Inter-American Commission shared their concern on revelations of the use of the malware Pegasus to monitor Mexican media and Mexican civil society while, fin while finishing a joint visit to that country. And in June last year, and thanks to the continued courageous collaboration between journalists, academics, and NGOs such as those participating today, we have learned of many more cases of abuse of Pegasus to monitor journalists, politicians, and defenders in over 45 countries around the world. And thus, as noted by our office in a press statement on January 31st, we are very concerned by the most recent revelations that devices used by over 35 journalists and human rights defenders from El Salvador were infected by the Pegasus malware between July 2020 and November 2021, some over 40 times and often in situations when the individuals targeted were conducting investigations on alleged abuses by authorities. Madam President, impunity and limited safeguards protecting the right to privacy are a root cause for the widespread prevalence of surveillance. Anytime reports on the surveillance of journalists emerge, such as those that have been presented today, it's critical to rigor, rigor, rigorously investigate how the surveillance was planned, how the surveillance was implemented, and what sort of actions it influenced. Therefore, we applaud the public statements issued by El Salvador's Attorney General on efforts to investigate these events, and we look forward to the results of that work. Yet, as has been noted by others, investigative efforts are insufficient if legal frameworks remain inadequate and create scope for arbitrary intrusions, such as, such as exposing those who carry the complex tasks of investigating and sharing information on government abuses. In this regard, we take this opportunity to express our concerns on two recent legal reforms that further expanded the scope for criminalizing legitimate media work and at the same time, further empowered authorities to conduct surveillance without adequate oversight. Last December's reform of the special law against computer and related crimes expanded its scope of application. The vagueness of the new formulation of Article 25 creates opportunities for criminalizing journalistic and other investigative work as any use of technology to obtain or distribute confidential information can now be subject to a prison sentence. Our office has observed that cybercrime's norms when adopted without a clear explicit requirement of intent to commit an act have proven to be highly problematic. Moreover, such broad provisions risk criminalizing whistleblowing and reporting based on confidential sources. And secondly, in February of this year, amendments to the Criminal Procedure Code created the scope to establish undercover informatics agents. These agents are empowered to conduct undercover digital operations to investigate crimes described by the special law against computer and related crimes and other special laws. According to new provisions, Article 259D, such agents would operate under police control and be appointed by the Attorney General's appointed by the Attorney General without a clear court order. The new formulation is also unclear regarding the circumstances in which agents could be deployed and fails to establish independent oversight to audit cases. Madam President, the concerns detailed in this hearing are not new. The need to safeguard privacy in the digital age is also well known. In successive United Nations resolutions, states have acknowledged the chilling effect that illegal surveillance poses to the tenets of democracy. The events reported in El Salvador require an effective investigation and indicate the urgent need for better global and national safeguards to ensure that the extremely invasive surveillance tools, such as the Pegasus malware, stop being marketed and stop being used to monitor and ultimately, ultimately intimidate the work of media and civil society. As societies adopt norms and practices to address concerns in cyberspace, we must recall that we do have clear standards to frame the way forward. First, surveillance measures can only be justified in narrowly defined circumstances based on the law. In addition, such measures must be both necessary and proportionate to a legitimate goal. And finally, judicial oversight is critical. And therefore, we look forward to hearing the results of the investigations of El, of El Salvador on the reported cases of monitoring of journalists and all others, and strongly encourage the authorities to reconsider and revise the existing national norms 
to reflect human rights standards. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Campbell. Now we will listen to the participation of the Commission as the President and Country Rapporteur and Rapporteur for the Rights of Women. I will begin and then we'll give the floor to my colleagues. First of all, I was just saying this at another hearing. I would like to thank you for this dialogue we are having here. And I would like to say that the Commission um, made a statement about this issue not only for El Salvador, but also Mexico, and recognizing this regional dimension of the Pegasus situation. Secondly, I would like to ask specifically, the civil society mentioned this, and I would like to ask for more information, but also the state, um, about this particular situation of jour women journalists and uh, spying and the risk they are suffering. The uh, commission received several reports um, where the pictures of these women and their children had been hacked. So I would like to know if uh, the civil society can send us more information about this and if the state can let us know about the specific measures they have implemented to investigate. I would like to thank the state for the information they gave us, but I would like to know what they are doing specifically for women. And third, in the report that the commission published, there's a specific mention to a request for a visit of the Rapporteurship for Freedom of Expression in El Salvador. So I would like to um, respectfully um, re-ask the state for this. And that will be all for me. I will now give the floor to my colleagues. First of all, the second Vice President, Margaret May McCauley. Um, thank you, Madam President, uh, for your invitation. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, the representatives of the Honorable State and the hardworking and committed members of civil society, the representative um, from the United Nations and the invited organizations. I thank all of you for being here and for the information you've given. Uh, it is very unfortunate um, that um, this um, situation exists at all, um, because as has been said before, this is a, a, a serious attack against the democracy and democratic standards. And as we all know, who are subjects to uh, part of this discussion, the Organization of American States requires the states through its instruments, the recommendations of its major organ, on human rights, that is the commission, and the Inter-American Court's jurisprudence to adhere strictly to all democratic standards and principles. And clearly what is happening now is completely against those standards. Uh, and uh, therefore it is, as I said, extremely serious um, what is happening. And it brings to mind a question. Um, the state says that they, members of the of government and, and so on, have also been subject to these cyber violations. Forgive me if I use the wrong terms. I'm not an expert at all in these matters. And I would leave the specificity of terms to others. And that really does not answer to what has happened to specific journalists who were, it is said, working on matters related to government policies. They were investigating them um, to, of course, publish um, um, the results of their investigation for public benefit, which is a right of the public to receive information. And and to share information, that's also right. And, and these also, the journalists and their families and their colleagues and their sources all have the right to privacy, which is also being violated. 
there's so many rights that are being violated. One does not wish to really start a list, but you can't help it. So I want to ask the state, is it unreasonable for the conclusion and from the investigation which were done by the journalists to conclude that the, the action or the actor is the state for what, is, what has been happening to their instruments being tapped and their information being irregularly, if not, I venture to say, illegally obtained. And if it is not the state who is, which is responsible, then what, you said you've been investigating, but what specifically have you been doing and how long is this investigation going to take for such serious violations of rights? Surely the investigation has to be as uh, um, the UN Mr. Campbell said, rigorously pursued and for us for it to be concluded as quickly as possible and for the state to take action to, to uh, prosecute, if necessary, the laws of the people, if you can identify an individual or a company and pursue it and stop it. That's the most important thing to do and that it doesn't re, re, um, occur again. But it seems that there is no urgency. I didn't feel an urgency from the state in this regard. And please, I am not saying that you're not, but, but this is an, an urgent matter and we must have the result of the investigation. Um, so I think I ought to stop here because I want the experts to have sufficient time to deal with it. Thank you very much. Thank you. I will now give the floor to Commissioner Roberta Clark. Thank you very much, President, and good afternoon, everyone, representatives of the state, representatives of uh, civil society, um, and Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights. So it's, it's very clear that there's absolutely no meeting of the minds on the facts between uh, the state representatives and the, and the organizations representing the journalists and civil society. On one side, civil society organizations have given clear evidence of hacking, and they've also spoken to why they think that that hacking has been uh, perpetrated by state actors. They spoke about the impact of that cyber surveillance that hacking on the rights of individuals, but also on the impact on, on, the, on the democracy. They, in the word used by the Mr. Scott Campbell is chilling, and that was also the word I was thinking of when I was listening to that. On the other hand, the state has been very clear that it has no knowledge. It's not, it's not the state who has been uh, behind this, the cyber surveillance, and they don't have any knowledge as to who is behind that. So my question is this, uh, thinking that the state has a, the duty a very clear and definite duty to protect, respect, and fulfill rights. Thinking about the respect, the protect obligation, clearly there has to be some uh, investigation into the the, court, the who's behind the, 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 the surveillance, the criminal surveillance, I would say, or the illegal surveillance. And so we've heard that there's an investigation underway, and I have some specific questions about the nature of that investigation for the state. Um, I want to uh, ask the state, what are the terms of the investigation? Uh, who, what is the agency responsible for that investigation? And how is the independence impartiality um, of that investigation assured? Who uh, has been, when, has, when did that investigation begin and what's the status of it and who has been consulted during the investigation? And then my second question, or my second set of questions revolves around the need for regulation of cyber surveillance, regulation and criminalization of illegal cyber surveillance. And I would like to ask the state, is there any uh, plan to um, uh, legislate around cyber surveillance and to regulate it appropriately? Thank you very much. Gracias. Le doy la palabra al Comisionado Bernal. Muchas gracias, Presidenta. Yo también estoy muy agradecido por eh, esta audiencia, por la presencia del Estado. De Thank you. I am really thankful for this hearing to the different uh, 
people here present and I had some questions that are really similar to the ones that Commissioner Clark made so I'm not going to repeat them but I do have a doubt and I would like to ask clarification to the state. The representative of the state said the following, journalists have the duty to exert freedom of expression in an adequate way. What does it mean? What does he mean when he says that journalists has a duty to exert freedom of expression and press in an adequate manner? Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. I would like to ask to the Executive Secretary, Tania Relo. Reno, I would like to briefly thank for the testimony of the people that have been affected by the use of Pegasus in their everyday life during days. Such intermissions to intimacy are, uh, um, thank you for bringing them to this Zoom screen. Uh, what these intervention mean in their life. I would also like to read the state of El Salvador and I would like to thank Citizen Lab and Amnesty International because they bring, bring further other information, technical information that supplement the testimony of those who have been victims of this intervention. I would like to tell the state that according to some of the press release that we issued in the commission, we insisted that the investigation lines in relation to the use of the spyware should contemplate the role of journalists and um, human rights defenders. That should be one of the investigation investigating lines in the theory that you are building on the case i would like to ask citizen love or amnesty you have experience of monitoring this type of spyware in some other countries so i would like to know the experience of who usually acquires these uh, equipments and how much that this an intervention cost and until what moment do people stop being affected that, what does it depend on thank you madam president thank you last but not least i would like to give the floor to the rapporteur for freedom of expression we have to minutes but as the commission has five minutes of closure i will give you three additional minutes thank you madam president i would also i would like to thank the commission for calling on this hearing it's a challenge we have ahead of us um and we if we gather different experience, we can face this tragedy and we can prevent them from occurring in the future. I would also like to greet the state uh, for the warranties of the right at stake really depend on constitutionality. And I would also like to express my solidarity with the victims and the organizations independently of the work they execute. Because I believe that it's enough to know three or four features of the Pegasus system to say that any person should be subjected or its life should be subjected to this level of invasion. I really think that in the state you have read thoroughly the press releases that were published by the commission and there are two uh, conversation spokes that are uh, uh, scopes that are really important for the rapporteurship. The first one has to do with the future of the human rights in IT environment. And here we have a series of messages that have been reinforced by the United Nations here that have to do with the call made by the United Nations and the commission 
for the moratorium in the use of these technologies until we do not have the appropriate framework. This is not a conversation that will stop here, but we should have uh, writing on the thought of the status to that respect, because this is a global challenge, but it has certain specific challenges for our region. And we can learn from what has happened in other latitudes as regards this topic. For instance, a reserve on information on certain contracts the, uh, of the companies providing these services recently in the European system, a commission was created to investigate these factors. The second ask, question has to do with the investigation itself. I would like to, with the hypothesis put forward here, there are some cases that were confirmed through the expert reports that were presented here in this hearing and there are more people that since they have um, devices with other operating systems the level of traceability is not the same i would like to ask the state how have been the level of cooperation with the company and SO group? How has been the level of cooperation within the institutions of the state? And I believe this is important to ask the state that if they are already, if they already know which are the criteria for processing the information, I believe this is essential for the investigation and the sanctioning of these facts. I would like to suggest that as to the persons whose name we already know, the this is something that has already happened with the use of this software, but I do believe that asking question that through the international experience have not been answered. I would also like to ask whether you have co co cooperation from the NSO group company and what is the level of progress in terms of the information that the state could get. Thank you, Madam President, for the opportunity. I would also like to reiterate that this is an important challenge at a regional level. Thank you, Mr. Rapporteur. Now the civil society has eight minutes for its intervention. Thank you. Madam President, I'm going to refer to your questions as to aggressions against women. In the APIS monitoring system, we we recorded an increase of those aggressions received by journalists that it incremented according to the monitoring performed in 2020. 175% and those types of aggressions are after uh, journalists publications and it receives as an answer some kind of attack and that kind of attack or that attempt to delegitimize the opinion of journalists is followed by an avalanche of ins injuries and um, threats that have a very strong component of sexual attacks. The attacks received by men never include things such as so strong uh, threats of violations or of uh, killing as women journalists do. We have documented that and we can send all that data and that information to the commission in written. I would also like to take this opportunity to say as to what the Salvadoran state had said through the Office of the Public Prosecution, it was it came as a surprise to us that the state is not spying when this espionage has not even finished. And I would also like to say 
that they told they said that we did not provide them with information the apps were summoned on march 2nd and we were interviewed by the prosecutor alejandro peña who did not know about the denounce we had made in january apps had made that notice on january 14 we were summoned once more on march 4th and we were interviewed by Naun Alvarado Ramirez at nine o'clock, March 4th. I gave him a copy already translated into Spanish of the report that is public of the Citizen, of Citizen Lab. Such report has the list of all the victims of all the journalists that have been victims. I gave him in his hand and the representative of the prosecutor office can verify these information so as not to keep on lying about that fact and to end with it's also came out as a surprise and it's really unfortunate that the uh, prosecution office places the blame on victims I would like to just say that constitutionally speaking, the one who has the burden of proof is the prosecution office. And when the prosecutor spoke, it seemed as a position by the state of El Salvador when in Article 193 of the Constitution, these are separate roles in order to warrant the uh, to have unbiased investigations and applying techniques conventional techniques especially when we are speaking of another type of crimes that require other topics and we can this is really uh, derived or deviated from the standards Thank you. I would just like to briefly reiterate our questioning, especially taking into consideration that the representatives of the Salvador and foreign office are here, whether that you have had communication with the state of Israel since you are victims of espionage with this spyware and whether you can make public the exchange of letters with the state of Israel in a matter that is of public interest and especially of those who have been affected by the use of this program. Thank you. If the civil society is over, I will, like, I will give the floor now to the representatives of the state. Thank you, Madam President. Dear commissioners, I'm a member of the civil society. I would like to answer each of the questions you have posed. They are interesting. I need to review some of them, whether if this is a problem in translation, because if not, they would be things that um, make a comment on topics that cannot be asserted now at this stage of investigation. I would like to reiterate the existence of cases in, and the investigation of those cases that without any doubt but i would also like to reiterate the monitoring of the victims and the follow-up of the victims i am going to answer to one of the colleagues once who asked about the the burden of proof and i would like to thank him for the comment obviously the institution within the justice system require to produce 
proof. And for that, we need the, the evidence and the institutions for the evidence. And those are the ones that can accredit the facts. But if we have information, vague information and names that come from different sources, I believe that this can be useful in, in those who have the information and not only the victims of possible F espionage of hacks in their phones to provide information that may be clear for this investigation, that may be key for this investigation. And I would like to refer to another case that the commission already knows where we have been existing for a long time in following up the victims and their representatives because we already had enough information. We had investigations that had already finished and until now, they never appeared before the prosecution office. And um, however, the Salvadoran state asked some of them, but they did not verify the outcomes of these investigations. The commission is already aware of this case. And I am saying this so that this is not repeated in the future because we need these people to provide information that they know they know firsthand and it is the duty of the prosecution office to control it on this issue i would like to invoke what mr scott campbell said he expressed on uh, he talked about impunity well, that is what we are trying to avoid. This case, such as any other, by these facts, we are trying to avoid impunity. And the other way is to work hand by hand. Yes, the, the proof, the burden of proof is on the prosecution, but we are only to count on the evidence that can be provided by the victims. I would like to insist on this topic that was said by Scott Campbell on the reform to cyber crimes law and the code of procedure. And I am concerned for the vision. And I am sorry if this is a matter of translation because I was lost because of the way on how it was said that it had been reforms for the victim. And I want to insist on this, the reforms for the code of procedure are going to reinforce the investigation. And I would like to add on this topic, one of the people uh, uh, said something about crimes against women. The prosecution office created the attached prosecution office in favor of children, women, and LGBTQ population. That allows us to have a restructuring without the institution in order to uh, allocate more resources to these kinds of crimes and to so that the in investigation techniques are well concluded in those cases. And that means that I'm going to reiterate that the undercover agent, and I'm going to do this exceptionally because our investigations are reserved and I'm not going to give details on this matter, but you know very well the use of an undercover agent to detect people that can have access to children and can uh, be included in sexual assault to children, for instance. I am going to stop there. I don't want to put at risk certain investigation techniques. We 
talked about how long, you asked about how long the investigation is going to take. These are complex crimes. I think um, you know that this is not easy. This, this has been going on since 2016. As far as I heard in other places of the continent and uh, many, many countries have been fighting this scourge. But as we said, we uh, you, you can count on the state for this. Um, I suppose, um, yeah, you've run over your time. So we are about to close the hearing. Madam President, I think we uh, were supposed to have an extra three minutes. Yes, of course, you're right. Thank you. So, uh, so with regards to the investigations, um, we can't say that the investigation is closed because it's not finished yet. Even though it is true that we do, the investigation is not over, that doesn't mean that we don't have uh, some findings that allow us to uh, be sure of certain things. According to some investigations we have pursued, we have some information to say what we said. That does not mean that we were finished with it. We have not exhausted all of our investigation lines yet. And I would like to stress something that I think was mentioned by the special rapporteur. And I think other members of the commission as well. It has to do with uh, being unbiased and impartial and independent. All the evidence gathered by the public prosecution is subjected to the um, judge. Everything, every piece of evidence. It is impossible for us to have a piece of evidence that we hide from a judge. It's impossible. That means that Whatever we investigate, we do it respecting our constitution and human rights, of course. That means respecting due process. We cannot do anything that violates a fundamental right. And every action that entails gathering evidence that will restrict a fundamental right needs uh, legal authorization. I just wanted to repeat that because I I didn't want to leave that open. So thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, we are almost at the end of this hearing. A uh, couple of things. I know that sometimes time is not enough. So if the state or the civil society have any pending issues, uh, you can submit whatever you want. Uh, the, um, um, you know, in written form. One thing with regards to the interpretation uh, that it was said that there might be problems with uh, the interpretation. So I think it's very important uh, so as to have transparency and better dialogue. I would like to um, thank the civil society, not only for its being here, but for its daily work, but because to because uh, this hearing is not the beginning nor the end of this uh, work. And we know that we will continue to assist journalists and they are at risk. It's not that journalists speak for others who are at risk, they are at risk themselves. And with regards to what the state representatives were saying about possible situations that might be affecting them themselves, we're talking about freedom of um, expression and privacy. I think that 
uh, even if someone holds a office in the state or in the civil society, there is a continuum. There is an additional risk in the case of the civil society, and there are obligations from the state in the case of officials, but uh, the concern for human rights, what's being uh, denounced by the civil society is a concern uh, that for the entire society. And that is why the Inter-American Commission is concerned. Democracy, as we said, not only is it guaranteed by judicial independence, but also by freedom of expression, because even in the worst regimes where there is no way to um, receive information, freedom of expression and the defense of privacy allow us to move forward ever since the De universal declaration of human rights that led to the universal system and the inter-american system why did that happen because people were being prosecuted for their ideas and that stigmatization puts these people at risk there are even cases discussed today lives, names, cases of persons asking for protection. The obligations of the state include actions and reparations, but also prevention. Every day, every case, we're talking about people who are at risk. So I would like to thank the civil society, but also the representatives of the state for being here for being part of this dialogue. Once again, very respectfully, the commission would like to carry out a working visit uh, by Rapporteur Pedro Vaca. We're all here, we're all online. That visit would be a monitoring visit to have direct conversations, to know the standards, to really understand the situation. So the Inter-American Commission will continue to work. Um, this uh, president of the commission, who's also the country rapporteur, um, is making this request. Let's hope that uh, it is successful. Thank you all once again for being here. Thank you to the persons you are representing here. The um, commission will always be here for you. Thank you very much.